Tips and Tricks for Using the Advanced Weather Track Programming Tools. Today we want to discuss some of the advanced programming. Specifically, we want to drill down on the details of programming one of your stations in user no ET. We also want to explore some of the efficient programming tools at WeatherTrack Central or WeatherTrack.net focused on making big changes or changing multiple stations at once to make the programming process more efficient. And lastly, we want to talk about the days and times function or controlling when your programs are allowed to irrigate. Today I'll be using overseeding programming as my example for all of these features. Overseeding is a routine task on some sites where you lay down new grass seed to replace or replenish the grass that you're already growing. This is generally accomplished by changing the irrigation to run through the heat of the day to make sure that the area of irrigation stays moist to encourage a good rate of germination. And an overseeding project requires that we change how we irrigate, specifically how much we water a station and when we water that station, to make sure that your overseeding project is as successful as it can be. When it comes to overseeding, the most important thing to understand about a weather track is how a station runtime is calculated. This is determined by the weather track program setting called station mode. Typically, your stations will be programmed in automated by weather track or auto mode. And when a station is in auto mode, an irrigation schedule will be created by calculating the rate of depletion by station or calculating how much water is in the soil and then the necessary irrigation to keep your plants healthy. This type of schedule requires real-time weather information, which WeatherTrack gets from the HydroPoint Climate Center, which provides WeatherTrack ET everywhere and our rain features to keep up with the changing weather conditions on your site, as well as detailed station scheduling. And the Automated by WeatherTrack schedule will consider all of those elements and create an irrigation schedule that fills the landscape irrigation requirement or deliver exactly the amount of water that it takes to maintain a healthy landscape. But maintaining a healthy landscape requires a different type of irrigation schedule than is required for planting new landscapes or sprouting new seeds like we do in overseeding. For this, we'll set a station station mode to user no ET. When you switch a station to user no ET, you switch it to a user defined station program where you the user define how many minutes per cycle and how many cycles per start time your station will irrigate. Then you'll program the soak time allowed between those cycles. Another important station setting in this case is the setting called usable rainfall. The first thing you'll program in for a station is the runtime. And this is the station irrigation runtime in minutes. Runtime part one is minutes. Runtime part two is tenths of minutes. So if you program a station to run for 3.5 minutes, you'll get three and a half minutes of irrigation. Next, you'll program in the number of cycles, which is the number of irrigation cycles per start time. So if you program a station with a runtime of five minutes and a number of cycles of three, your total station runtime for that start time will be 15 minutes, delivered in three cycles of five minutes apiece. The user-defined soak time is the minimum time a station should wait in between its programmed cycles. So if you have a three station controller where each of the stations is programmed to run five minutes three times with a 20 minute soak, at your program start time, station one would turn on, irrigate its five minutes, and then begin its 20 minute soak time. While station one is soaking, station two will come on and deliver its five minutes of irrigation, finish that and start its soak time, and then station three. But when station three finishes its first cycle, station one will have only been soaking for 10 minutes. And since station one is the next station up in the queue, the weather track is going to wait the additional 10 minutes to make sure that minimum 20 minute soak time has been met in this program. Now let's say you have a six station controller set up the same way with five minutes three times for every station with a 20 minute soak time for each. Again, at your program start time, station one will begin to irrigate. It will irrigate its five minutes and then start its 20 minute soak and station two will immediately kick on and begin its irrigation. Then the program will move sequentially through stations three, four, five, and six. And once the entire controller has irrigated, station one will be back up in the queue. At this point, the program checks the soak time for station one to make sure we've accomplished that minimum soak time. And in this case, it will be 25 minutes since that station last irrigated. That means we've passed our minimum soak time and that station is ready to begin irrigation again immediately. So if you watch this program run in the field, you would see stations one through six irrigate and then station one kick on again with no delay. So the program would run all six stations three times without any downtime in the program. Now we want to talk about a programming feature called Usable Rainfall. 
This is the feature that defines whether a station should be listening to the controller rain information or not. In some cases, you want an irrigation station to irrigate in spite of local rain. So even if the rain sensor kicks on or the hydropoint climate center sends a rain pause to that controller, during overseeding, you may want to water even in spite of local rain information. If you want your station to continue to listen to the rain sensor and rain pause, leave it at 100% usable rainfall. If you want it to disregard the rain information, change that setting to none. With WeatherTrack, you can program the station mode in any one of our three interfaces, specifically the WeatherTrack interface, WeatherTrack Mobile 3.0, or WeatherTrack Central or WeatherTrack.net. If you're standing at the controller, you can edit the station mode by going to the stations menu or hitting the stations button and first select the station that you want to edit and then hit the forward arrow and the first question that it asks you is station mode you can also change the station mode from WeatherTrack Mobile 3.0 by first selecting the site that you want to manage then selecting the controller that you want to manage and once you see the list of stations pushing the button on the left hand side the one that shows the station number will take you to the station programming for that station here you'll find the station mode where we would switch from auto mode to user mode and when we switched from auto mode to user mode the auto mode settings would be grayed out and you'll be able to edit the user mode settings always remember to hit apply to save your changes finally to program station mode at weathertrack central you log into weathertrack.net and we go here to the smart irrigation tab and select the program page and when we get to the program page this is where all the programming of a controller happens so for station mode we open up our stations menu and you see all of our stations are here in auto mode and to change a station to user mode I go to station mode and I select user no ET from the drop down menu then when I save this through by hitting save and send after the save is complete then you'll see as I scroll down past the stations past the auto mode down into the user mode settings I open up the user mode settings and we find station one in the user mode list now that station one is in user mode we go through and set up the program for this station specifically the runtime or the minutes per cycle and the number of cycles or the cycles per start time and then the soak or the minimum soak time between each cycle so if I wanted to run station one for 15 minutes every night I could either select 15 minutes one time by selecting runtime 15 minutes number of cycles one or I could select runtime five minutes number of cycles three and this number of cycles will act as a multiplier and I'll get three cycles of five minutes each for a total runtime of 15 minutes this is a powerful tool when it comes to overseeding because the weather track is capable of as many as 72 cycles per station per start time we have a lot of flexibility in how we water that new seed in I recommend using many short bursts of irrigation to make sure that we're keeping the area thoroughly saturated without overrunning the irrigation system. And then always save and send your changes. One of the key advantages of using WeatherTrack Central is that the Central allows us to see and manage many stations at once. So typically when you're overseeding, you're not overseeding one of your stations, you're overseeding a lot of stations all at once and changing this in the cloud is super easy if I wanted to change all of my stations in auto mode to user mode I could just simply select all and come down here to the bottom and say user no ET then I'd hit preview changes and when I hit preview changes it changes all of the station modes on all of the stations to user no ET and then I would hit save and send and when that saves through those stations will come back on the user menu it's also important to understand that all of the automated by weather track settings for every station are still saved on an individual basis so when I turn these stations back to auto mode the unique settings will be saved and restored for each station individually and the advantage of using the weather track central tools become even more powerful when you start to apply the advanced programming features like station grouping and batch action which is the weather track feature that allows you to collect any or even all of your stations and save them together as a group and then apply the same settings change to all of the stations in the group so if you wanted to make a change to all of your stations at once the station grouping and batch action tools would allow you to do that if you're doing overseeding in the demonstration I'll show you how easy it is to make a group of all of your turf stations and then switch all of those turf stations at one time to user mode 
You can use these station grouping tools to more efficiently manage your programs and you can save the station groups so you can revisit this programming in the future and make additional changes to any particular group without having to resort or recreate the group. And the station grouping tool is a feature that lives on the smart irrigation tab and the controllers page. So I go to the controllers page. So you select all or any of the controllers that have stations that you want in this group. And then once you've selected the controllers, you go over to the advanced drop down menu and select create station group from the advanced menu. And once that saves through, you can see that now instead of a list of all of the controllers that I manage, it's all of the stations on all of the controllers that we selected. Once we get to the end of the Atlanta demo, we go to Alligator Park and we see that all of the controllers that we selected are spelled out station by station. And once you have all of the stations on this list, you want to use our advanced sorting tools to help you efficiently sort through the stations that you manage and make precise station groups. So if we're overseeding our turf, we're going to want to change the irrigation schedule for all of our turf stations. So we take our entire list of stations and we sort it by plant type. When I type turf in the sort box under the plant type, it automatically removes from the list any station that doesn't have the word turf in it. So with that one filter, I've taken out all of my tree stations and my garden stations, and I'm only showing the turf stations on the three controllers that I manage. To finalize the station group, we select the stations that we want in our group. So if we select all, we can eliminate one station or another, and only the highlighted stations will be saved. Then we name the group and create a description before we hit the Save button, and the system will confirm your station group. We want to hit Save, and when that saves through, we will have successfully created a station group, in this case all of the turf stations. Notice once you've saved it as a station group, on the right side we have this button called Batch Action. The Batch Action tool was created to allow a user to make the same change to every station inside of a station group. And you can use this Batch Action tool to change any of the programming elements on a controller. So you can use it for percent adjust or change all of your stations to program A. So first I select batch action and then I select the change that I want to make to all of the stations in this group. If I'm doing overseeding, that means I want to change the station mode. And when I select the station mode, the action detail allows me to go in and identify which station mode I would like to send to all of the stations in the group. So I want to change all the stations to user no ET and then hit apply change. When that saves through we will have successfully sent the command that will change the station mode for every station in the group to user no ET and the system will automatically restore each station's user mode program individually. So each station's program will be restored to run however it ran last when it was programmed in user mode. So you can see how the station grouping and batch action tools make an easy job of collecting many stations together and making the same programming change to all stations in the group. Now for our overseeding project, we know why and how to change our stations to user mode and how to make big changes in the weather track system or change many stations at once to save time in a project like this. Now I'll finish by talking about changing your days and times or changing when a station runs. And to change when a station waters, the programming needs to be addressed in two separate areas. So we need to look at this programming in both the station settings and the days and times. And when programming a station setting, you assign every station to a program. And that will tie that station to that program in the days and times menu. Then you go into the days and times menu and manage when that program will be allowed to irrigate. So you set up a start time water window and water day mode that defines when that program and all of the stations inside of it are allowed to irrigate. And to get that done at weathertrack.net, we start by going to the Smart Irrigation tab and down to the Program page. And when you see the Program page, the first thing we do is make sure we're selecting the correct controller. So we select the controller that we want to manage. And once you know you're on the right controller, you go down and open up the Stations menu and we will open up our stations in user mode and see all of the stations that we just changed to user mode. Here you'll notice that the first thing we set for a station is the program to which it's assigned. So here on the stations menu we can change which program our stations are assigned to or we can change the program that all of our stations are assigned to by using the preview changes like before. Then always save and send those program changes. 
And once we've got all of our stations assigned to the right program, then we go to the days and times, and you can see that with the WeatherTrack Pro 3, I've got eight different programs, A through H, and each one can have its own start time, water window, and water day mode. Do note that different controllers have different numbers of programs, so on an LC you might have as few as two. Now notice that in default settings, all eight programs will be tied to the start time and water window for program A. That's because this controller is in stack. If I go up to the setup menu and I change from stack to overlap, I unlock the controller's ability to have every program have its own individual start time and watering window. In addition, I give the controller the ability to run multiple programs at the same time if they share time in the water window. So be careful when you switch from stack to overlap that you don't overprogram the controller and have more stations running in the field than the pipes of your irrigation system can supply. If we try and run too much irrigation all at the same time, then nothing will perform as you expect it to. So once we've switched to overlap, we'll be able to program the program B settings. So we close setup. And now for our overseeding project, we want to set up a start time and water window during the day. So we let program A continue to do what it does, and we go to program B to start at 10 a.m. with an 8-hour water window, and that should allow enough time for my irrigation schedules to run during the day to keep those seeds happy and healthy. If I want, I can use this second water window. If you have stations in user mode, the second watering window will try and run your entire station program again. This will multiply your user programmed runtime by running the full irrigation program in both the watering windows. And last, we program the water day mode, where we select which days the irrigation will run. Remember, if your water day mode is set to optimize by weather track, when your stations are programmed in auto mode, that means that the station has full availability. So the weather-based irrigation program could run any day that it needs. But when your stations are programmed in user mode, that means this program will run every day. Most likely you want your overseeding project to run every day, so Optimize by WeatherTrack is a fine controller setting. Some managers choose days of the week and make sure that every day is selected, uh, or you can select to take multiple days off if that's what you want to do. Remember to hit set and then hit save and send with the water day mode schedule that you want for this program. And remember that stations in user mode will try and water their entire program at every start time on every water day. Now that you're an expert at managing days and times, check out the weather track features that allow you to make big changes to your days and times features. And for that, you're going to need to check out your compliance monitor. So go to the compliance monitor tab and select the program grouping tool. And once that saves through, you'll be able to create a new program group from your controllers. So again, step one is select the controllers that you want in your group. Then use the advanced sorting tools to create the group that you would like. Once you have the programs you would like, select all of those programs, name the group, save the group, and then you'll be able to update the program settings for all of the programs inside the group in terms of start times, water windows, and water day mode. And then always hit save and send, or in this case, update. Again, for the overseeding programming on your weather track controller, you're going to want to change how much you water each station and when you water each station. To change each station's irrigation schedule, we'll change the station mode to user no ET and define exactly how many minutes we want each station to run. And using the station settings and the days and times menu, we'll switch those stations from nighttime irrigation to daytime irrigation. Remember that many of our customers purchase WeatherTrack as part of a water saving initiative and the user no ET is not a water saving feature. As such, our best water saving stories come when stations are programmed in automated by WeatherTrack. So a savvy WeatherTrack user knows that user no ET is necessary for certain landscape applications, but you're not saving any water by using it. So please get those stations back into auto as soon as possible. In addition, we've covered how to make big changes to your portfolio. And the detailed settings of how each station generates runtime is important for the landscape health. Sometimes in making these big changes, our users have had certain stations fall through the cracks and either get switched inadvertently or not had good information at the end of the programming process. And remember what Stan Lee said, with great power comes great responsibility. So when you're using those big change tools, be cautious, make sure that the detailed information is right, and be ready to react if an inaccurate change has been made.